Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo Esports podcast. This is episode 92 for the week of September 17th, 2019. My name is Josh, aka JK Fire, and this week I'm joined by the man in the Team Envious jersey, Will, aka I am Mr. Mayhem. Will, how are you on the Sunday afternoon? Doing good, man. Excited to talk about some Halo Esports going on. I'm sad that the Minnesota Vikings lost today in horrible fashion. Thanks to Kirk Cousins. They did not look good. Nope. So, um, we got a lot coming up on the show, a lot to talk about. We do. Um, how are you doing today, man? You know, um, again, I'm with you. Kind of disappointed that the, the Vikings weren't able to pull out that win in Lambeau. Um, but it's okay. It is what it is. Not to sound like a Debbie Downer, I did predict us to lose this game. You know, Aaron Rodgers at home. Sure. Yeah, and it's it's just what was expected. But if Kirk didn't throw those two interceptions, we I think we had a I think we had a good chance at the late end game of that. We had a, we had a shot. Yeah. I think I need to lower my expectations of the I'm, Vikings. I've I've been <laughs> sure. a Vikings fan for most of my life because I didn't really know what football was until I was about six years old. But and you've paid attention to them more more than I have, as and which means you've paid attention to them like during their big. Like they had big opportunities and then they had the big disappointments. Right. Yeah. Um. Man, Minnesota sports. Minnesota well, sports. Well, well, what I'll say is my, uh, my hope for this year is the Twins because the last time they had three um, players hit more than 30 home runs each was in 1987, the year we won the World Series. And then we won one time after that in 91, 91 the year yep. that you – were you born in 91? Nope, 92. Okay. The year I was born. So there you go. Just aged myself. You guys know how old I am now if you do the math. But um, <laughs> I thought we've already talked about that previously. Maybe we have. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so holding on to the Twins, seeing if they can do big things in the playoffs. History of Minnesota sports is uh, we get to the playoffs, but then we just uh, fall off the edge and don't do well. So I think we're going up against the Indians right now. Yes. And there we, are like big contention as to whether or not they or we make it into the playoffs. So. Well, we're, I think we're into the playoffs no matter what. They're okay. just behind us for first place. Oh, okay, perfect. So we're both fighting for first place. It's the fact that we, I, th- I know we won yesterday. I don't know if, what the, what happened in the game today. We did win yesterday? Yeah, it was like nine to five. Oh, oh wow. Then they didn't make it. Okay, because I was listening to the radio when I was getting food last mm-hmm. night. Yeah. And uh, Indians were up five to two. So I guess they just didn't score after that. Yeah. I'm happy about that. That's fine with me. Um, What else? Yeah. The, um, Just holding on to baseball. I guess I'll bring in the wild because I'm a hockey player and a Do hockey it up. fan. Do it um, up. We've gone through a couple GM changes over the last year. Um, we're kind of in that half. We're rebuilding half. We're holding on to our semi-good talent to see what happens. So um, expectations aren't high for them this year, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, Josh. We'll there have it to is. wait and see. There it is. But what? Um, let's get into some some Halo. What do we have coming up on this episode, Josh? Thank you for asking, Will. On this episode of HGS Pro Talk, we have Call of Duty news, Dota news, Gears 5 news, Halo news, obviously. Come on, we're a Halo show, but the, the other points are big and we want to talk about them. Uh, we have tournament announcements, tournament recaps, we have plenty of community creations, and finally, we don't have our topic. Why don't we have a topic this week, Josh? So I want to go through everybody's responses. Thank you to everybody who has responded so far, but I want to go through them all. I want everybody to give me their concise points. And then I can take all that and we'll talk about it next week. So you heard it here right now. Um, you have a ne- you have a full week now to get your responses in on esports franchising. You like it, you don't like it, so on and so forth. We'll talk about it next week. Man, I did my own research. I have a full like notes, like Microsoft you do. notes set up here that I was wow. ready to read. Wow. <sighs> All right, I'll have to wait till next week. Yes. Um. So if you guys haven't gotten your responses in, please do so. You can do it on social media. You can do it on Discord as well. Uh, Will's going to shout that out at the end of the show. And yeah, so I'm giving you guys an extra week. I want to do some research myself, and I also want to condense everything down of what people talked about because I don't want to miss points, and uh, I want to be able to get as much as I can, but keep it clear and concise. So yeah, without further ado, Will, what do we always start... <laughs> What do we always start the show off with? Oh, what man. do we always start the show off with? Roster Media! Josh. Yes, Will? We got nothing for Roster Media this week. 
Um, that means it's time for COD and other games. Watch. What do we have? Great question. We have plenty, believe it or not. So first and foremost, we have uh, Ian Crimsix Porter announces free agency. This is by Ian Porter. For those who don't know who Crimsix is, he was on that Call of Duty roster for Optic Gaming. And uh, let's uh, let's get into it. He states from a tweet, and I quote, Restricted free agent for the 2020 season. All of that hard work for essentially nothing. If any franchise teams would like to contact me, reach out here at crimsix at hush. Dot com. That is Crim6, C-R-I-M-S-I-X, at Hush, H-U-S-H, dot com. He also put out another tweet, and it's um, it's a picture of, like, a quote here. Here's what he had to say. Three people colluded against me towards two of my best friends that I've known for over a third of my life. They were given a 3v1 ultimatum to replace me on a team that they wanted to leave or have left in the past. Five years of hard-ass work helping build a brand that wasn't my own that I was essentially forced out by other people other than Seth and Hector. This all happened at midnight and there was an important franchise meeting early the next day. I had about a couple of late-night hours to throw together players, salaries to tell the players, perks, etc. I don't know if the timing was a coincidence or planned, but this was pretty much impossible. Point is, I don't care that they did this and I'm not complaining. I'm pissed at the fact that they didn't even give Seth and Hector a reasonable choice. I didn't even ask Seth to pick between the two options. It would have been unfair to him. Without going into detail, it turns out that this was all for nothing too. So there you go. Um, all I can say is without knowing the full story behind it, I this sucks. This, I mean, Crimson is one of the most winningest player in Call of Duty history. So I, I guess I don't understand his story here. Sure. Um, I know he was, he's let go, right? Yep. Um, well, he, he, they were given the ultimatum and besides, and instead of giving them the choice, he's just like, you know what? To avoid as much of this as possible, I'll just leave. Got it. Okay. Yep. So I believe the two, the two of the best friends that he was talking about in that post were Seth and Hector. Yep. Right. So Scump and Optic Hex, right? That's those are the two I believe that he was including. I got um, it now. I yep. got it. I understand. So yeah. the three people that colluded, I don't know. It's exactly who those three are. I mean, I bet if you, I bet if you went down the line, you could probably figure it out pretty quickly. But we're not going to talk about that. Um, yeah, all I can say is that that is that sucks for him. Um, I wish him the we wish him the best of luck. And uh, come on, he's going to be picked up by a franchise. He has to be, right? He's you one. Would, yeah, you would think so. He's one of the best players. But in the words of HS Pro Talk, will we'll have to wait and see. Thank you very much. Um, next up. Hector Optic Hex Rodriguez moves on. This is by Hector Rodriguez on Twitter, and I quote, This is a joint statement from Immortals Gaming Club and Hector Rodriguez. Since completing its acquisition of Infinite Esports and Entertainment, the parent company of Optic Gaming, Immortals Gaming Club, IGC, and Hector Hex Rodriguez have held extensive and amicable conversations about the future of Optic and Rodriguez, Rodriguez's role within the organization. Ultimately, Rodriguez declined the opportunity to remain in his current role with Optic and instead chose to pursue new and independent ventures. Quote, Optic has been a significant part of my life for many years, said Hector. I have great respect for the Immortals organization, and they have treated me and all of Optic's players fairly during this transition period. I wish them and Optic well in the future. Quote, Hector has been ahead of the curve and a leader in our industry for a long time. We wish him continued success and are excited to see what he does next, said Ari Segal, CEO of IGC. Hector has left a permanent mark on esports and his legacy will always be a part of Optic Gaming's DNA. End quote. Both parties look forward to the new Call of Duty Franchise League and continuing to grow and strengthen esports for the players and fans in the world. The story doesn't end there. Shortly after this statement went live, Hector went on Twitter and released a video. He announced his next move. That next move is none other than becoming the co-CEO of NRG and the Chicago Call of Duty franchise. So congratulations to him. I mean, I wish it was Minnesota, but you know, it's fine. (laughs) I I understand where his ties are. That's, yeah. I think it'd be just amazing if he was on the Minnesota side of things, but whatever. Uh, Huge congratulations to him. And can't wait to see what he does with the amount of passion and love that he has for the scene itself and the players. He he's nothing. He is everything about the players. So I think this is going to be a great move for him. Can't wait to see what he does. 
The next news story we have in Cod and other games watch team liquids Dota two team was so successful. They're striking out on their own. This is by Andrew Webster of the verge. And I quote, one of the most successful teams in Dota two is moving into a new field team ownership. Today, esports organization Team Liquid announced that its championship-winning Dota 2 squad will be leaving the organization to form their own. Quote, After four years under the Team Liquid organization, our Dota team has decided to pursue this new dream, to build a team of their own, wrote Liquid founder uh, Victor Nazgul Goosens. Quote, While it fills me with the great sadness to part ways with the best Dota roster we could have ever have dreamed of, I am proud of the unforgettable years we have spent together, which include innumerable championships, records, and memories, end quote. Liquid's Dota division was formed in 2012, but the core of the current squad began taking shape in 2015 and is most notable for winning the 2017 edition of Dota 2 Championship, the International, pulling in more than $10 million in prize money. It followed that up with a fourth place performance in 2018 and finished as runner up in this year's edition of the tournament, which featured the largest prize pool in esports history. Quote, we're about to start our own project, end quote. Team captain Kuro Kuroki uh, Salehi Ta- Takasomi, I totally apologize if I butchered that name, explained in a video posted on Team Liquid's site. Quote, it comes with a lot of uncertainty, but we are very ambitious people, and it's been one of my passions that I've had to set aside, end quote. He added that, quote, we'll give you guys updates as soon as possible, end quote. While it may be surprising news, given the success of the team, particularly financially, it makes sense that the Dota 2 squad would want a greater degree of ownership over their careers. The news comes at a time when esports organizations are increasingly becoming large, multifaceted businesses. As for Team Liquid, Goosen says that the organization plans to remain in Dota 2, though there are no concrete roster announcements yet. Quote, we are here to stay, end quote, he wrote. Quote, it is hard to predict the future, and it is by no means a given that we find the right fit immediately when we look for a roster. But I can definitely say that we love this game and want to be a part of it, end quote. I think that's huge. That is a huge announcement. Um, they've been together for a while, that, that roster, and seeing them want to branch out and do their own thing. This, this reminds me of like uh snake bite, right? Um, no, obviously no offense to snake bite, but this feels like snake bite on a little bit bigger of a level. Okay. And I think that this could, this could obviously be a huge move. Obviously they know what the, like they have the players intentions in mind here. And considering they are players themselves, they probably want the best out of all situations. So just like snake bite wants the best out of tox, um, and wants the best for his players. I think this is a fantastic move. I love to see this happening. Um, next news story. Gears developer responds with an apology. This is by the Coalition on Twitter, and I quote, As a token of our appreciation for your patience and support during the, this weekend's early access, we're awarding five days of boost, which is faster progression, and 600 scrap, which is craft skills or supply cards. Look out for it in the next 48 hours, and thank you so much for playing Gears 5. Okay, I ranted about this game last week, and go ahead and listen to that if you want to. I'm not going to do it in this episode, but I'm going to say this, and I'm only going to say this. Okay, Will? I promise. I don't think this was enough. Um, The scrap is not the paid currency that you can use for microtransactions in the game. I think it would have been better if they would have given you the paid currency instead of the scrap, That way you can maybe put that towards a cosmetic, maybe put that towards an emote, so on and so forth. Get a little bit more out of it because the the issues were in abundance over that weekend. Um, The the five-day boost, I like that move. I think that's great because the boost really didn't work very well considering the amount of problems that happened over that weekend. Um, But the other thing I will say is, is that issues are still being worked on to this day. And... Dom, who I completed the game with, um, he logged in recently to check and see if his campaign progress was because the coalition had stated that stats were still being tracked. Okay. So him and I completed the campaign together. We saw the end credits together. We got through the whole thing together, right? Apparently stacks were uh, stacks. Stats were still being tracked. So progression should have still been tracked. He logged in recently to see if he would get the campaign completion. The game still thinks he is a little bit over 40% completed of the game. So again, I'm not going to get into a rant here. I'm just going to say to the coalition, I really hope you guys fix that. Um, I really got, I really hope you guys work towards it. Um, And I may hop in and play some multiplayer because I still like the multiplayer of the game. That's what I'll say. So 
what I'll have to say. Recent Microsoft releases. Yes. Day one's been horrible. I'm going to put an asterisk next to that. And the only game I'm going to exclude from that is Forza. Yes. Launch yes. launch was perfect for that. Yeah. But go ahead. Go ahead. So I don't want to get ranty either, but when you're when you're coming out with your first party titles, right? Those are your big hitters. You're going to have such a big influx of people wanting to play that game. I feel like at this point they should know what they have coming and they should be ready for it. Um, it, it is disappointing when you have diehard fans who want to get on and play your game and they can't. Um, just hope it gets better moving forward and we'll leave it at that. Yes. And like I said before, if you want to hear my full rant on this, listen to last week's episode. Big it's long a rant. <laughs> it's a doozy. Um, okay, next up. Speaking of Gears of War, this is actually really good. Gears of War unveils Future of Gears Esports. This is by Dan, uh, Dana Sin- Sissons. Is that how you pronounce Dana's last name? Sissons? Yeah, Sissons. Okay. Sure. The director of communications from the coalition. This is a, a post over on news.xbox.com, and I quote, Fresh off the launch of the critically acclaimed Gears 5, the coalition, in partnership with premier esports operator PGL, are excited to unveil the details for the next season of Gears Esports. The 2019-2020 season will be the biggest offering in Gears of War Esports history. We've added a pro league, New regions, South America and Asia Pacific, and increased travel pricing, giving more opportunities for eligible players of all skill levels the ability to compete for more than $2 million worth of prizing. This season of Gears Esports will feature regular online competition and a number of live events, including four major international opens, regional lands, and local competitions hosted at Microsoft stores. The 2019-2020 Gears Esports season will be divided into four quarters, each capped off with a major international event. Brand new for Gears 5, the Pro League will feature the top teams from our biggest regions placed into four divisions, North America Alpha, North America Bravo, Latin America, and Europe. A four-week online qualification period consisting of ladder and weekly tournaments will begin on September 22nd to determine the four teams in each division. Once Pro League play starts in October, every team will play against every other team in their division online twice over the course of six weeks for cash prizing and seeding considerations leading into the first major of the season, which is set to take place in San Diego from December 6th through the 8th, 2019. After each major event, the bottom placing team from each Pro League division will be forced to re- uh, requalify for their spot against the top challenger teams in their region. This season will then culminate in a world championship in the summer of 2020. So here are the key Gears Esports dates. Online platform registration is September 22nd. Regional online competitions, tournaments every Sunday starting September 22nd. And then 24-7 ladder play starting on September 23rd. Fall quarter pro league qualifiers. Weekly tournaments on the 22nd and 29th of September and the 6th and 13th of October. Ladders, qualifying player will be September 23rd to, through October 18th, with the playoff tournament happening on October 19th. And here are your major events. San Diego Open from December 6th through the 8th, 2019. Mexico City Open in March of 2020. Uh, one that's to be announced, May 2020. And the World Championship location to be announced, July 2020. For more information about the upcoming season of Gears Esports, including how to compete, please visit gears.gg. So a couple major points here. MLG is not the one hosting these events anymore. It is now the PGL. Um, I'm anxious but excited to see what happens here. I am stoked they have a pro league now because I, I harp on them all the time. I want Halo to have a pro league. I think this is a great step for Gears. I've always loved Gears Esports and... I can't wait to see what the competition brings in the 2019-2020 season. Is there anything you want to say, Will, before we move on? Just good to see they're laying it out all out there. All right. And that does it for COD and other games. Watch. Hey, Will. Yeah. Guess what? What? It's time for Will's Adventures Within the Lowers. Another game's to. What'd you play, Will? Uh, let's see. I played some Grand Theft Auto. Did you? Online. Did you? 
with you, Dom, and Nick. Very nice. It was fun. We did a heist. We, we lost half we our did. money. <laughs> I am part of the problem there. So you start on this one heist, you start off with a million dollars. You have to make it to a point. As the cops are chasing you, if they shoot the money bags, you lose money as you go. If you fall and damage the money bags, you lose money. So we started off with a million, ended with 448000 and some odd change. Yes, and and keep for those who don't know, we are on motorcycles. Yeah, so it's it's tough. It's easier for them to shoot us. Yep. So that was. Well, we got through it. We beat it. We did. Um. I need to keep making money in that game to keep up. I bought a I bought a car, so I I, I had one point four million dollars. Bought a five hundred thousand dollar car. It's okay. <laughs> so. See, I want that. I want that speed racer car. Yeah. I keep looking back at it, I, like, um, man, I want that vehicle. I bought like a a rally car looking thing. Nice. Uh, it, it's um, was it the one I shot the tires out of. No, I, okay. it was it was to, like today. <laughs> oh, okay. Or, yeah, I'm, this I'm morning. This morning I bought it. Cool. Um, but it it doesn't turn as well as it could for it being a rally car. Are you using your handbrake? Yeah. Huh. I upgraded the transmission and the engine. And it just doesn't seem to turn as well. That's weird. Like when I first bought it before the upgrades, it would just like if you try to turn, it would just spin out. Got it. So, See, that's the way. It, so the casino, right? Yeah. You can win a vehicle with a daily spin. Yep. That one that I got. That's what it does. It just spins out. Yeah. It, I mean, it looks cool. I got flames on it. Looks <laughs> sick. But no, it's it's just, I, I would not take that out normally. I'll say that. Okay. What else uh, you play? Um, on Friday night, I also, I don't want to say I played Sea of Thieves, but I've logged into Sea of Thieves. That's what I did to get the Halo stuff. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I'd spent real world money and purchased the pets. They came out with, with you can get your own pet. How much did you spend? And you got a monkey, didn't you? I got a monkey. I had to. You know what the best part is? A, I didn't know monkeys were part of it. And B, I just knew it had to be that. Yep. So I, I bought, there's two different types of monkeys. So I okay. bought one of each. Okay. One's like a, a capuchin monkey. I don't know what the other one's called, but it looks more like a baboon. Okay. Um, I have them both. One's white, one's blue. Ooh, and blue it's, monkey. It's kind of, and I bought their little outfits for them too. So they have like, a, um, it looks like a, a gun. It's not a gun belt, but it's like a sash and then um, pants. So they kind of look like a pirate. So they look well, like pirate, pirate monkeys. Yeah. And then, so they actually will like follow you around. If you're on the island, they just, if you're running around on an island, they follow you. That's awesome. Um, if you emote, like when you sleep, they lay down and sleep. If, oh. you're, if you're clapping, they clap. Um, how can, much did you spend on you this? You can carry, your, carry them around <laughs> on your arm. You can set them on like the edge of your boat as you're sailing and they just sit there and do things. Um, I spent, uh, so I bought their, you, it's again, they have fake currency that you buy with real money. Yep. Microtransactions. And, yeah. Um, I spent, uh, not a lot, but a decent amount. How much did you spend? I want to feel better about myself buying Halo 5 rec packs. So that's, I spent 30 bucks. Oh, so, okay. So I got I the mean, game, uh, I got the game on discount for like 25. Sure. So this was me just making up the rest of my game purchase for them since I did. Sure. However, when he justified, that's fine. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So this was me. No, if you, if you like it, then by all means go right ahead. And it's I know perfectly, obviously it's fine. I, I, I was talking with you and Dom mm-hmm. and Nick, you know, you guys said the game was kind of incomplete when it came out and all their updates were, um, you know, to kind of make it a full game, but there's still people working endless hours to make the game better and implement oh, yeah. these things. So just For supporting sure. them in a game that I like, it's honestly, it's rare to find a game that I want to sink that many hours into nowadays. Wait, what is it? A game? No. W- what word did you use? It's, it's what to find a game like this? It's hard. You used a different word. Difficult? No, you said rare. Oh, <laughs> it's by rare. Yes. Thank you for finally helping me get there. <laughs> it's, uh, I didn't even mean to use that, but, but you did, but I did. So Pun city. So it's, yeah, I don't, so I, I didn't mind spending the extra 30 bucks to get, and I have more coin for when they come out with more stuff. Cause you know, they're going to come out with more stuff. No. And that's, that's fine. I mean, I think they're a little bit too expensive, but that's just me. I can agree. But at the same time, it's like, I've spent money on destiny, right? Yeah. And it, like, I don't play it all the time, but. I got my money's worth out of it and I'm excited for shadow keeps come out and I'll probably still buy stuff in that game. But yeah, it's, if you like it, you like it. I do believe that it's, those are a little bit too expensive. I do believe that 
So I'm not, again, I'm not going to rant, but I'm just going to say, I'm just for the, for the sake of the conversation with gears five, right? The thing that irks me about that is that the game came out as a full $60 yet has microtransactions from the get go. Mm -hmm. When, and I know that, I know that destiny has them as well, but the money that people spend on the microtransactions help for the live service updates of the game. And that game is a live service game with gears five. It was just, I don't know. It felt, it felt like a money grab. It did to me, to me a little, a little bit did. Yeah. And we're going to talk about some halo related stuff. I know we're talking about other games right now, but we're, we're going to talk about some halo related stuff and yeah, you just bear with us here, but yeah, I, I don't, what else did you play? Speaking about microtransactions, I played Rock Band. Oh, did you, be, did you purchase some songs? Not, not this week, but I've, I've spent my fair share of money on Rock Band songs. Um, let's just say, so, fiance went out to do wedding stuff Saturday. Yes. Parents left. They weren't here. You had the place to yourself. I had the place to myself. You played some Rock Band. I played Rock Band, and I sang my heart out. <laughs> what, was, what was your highlight oh, gosh. of the night? I don't know if there was a highlight. But I like I felt like I was singing well. Awesome. Like I, I, I had to, and it was weird because usually usually when you're singing like I, I use my closed back headphones the Astros with yeah. the mod kit, and usually when you can't hear yourself well you don't sing as well. I just felt like it was I was hitting those notes better. Sounds like you and Scott Puddle need to do a collaboration. Maybe maybe, um, no. But I I, oh, I full comboed a song that I had never full comboed before, and that's. You know, you hit all phrases beginning to end. Yeah. And now I can't remember which one it was. Nice job. But. Hey, congratulations on getting that full combo yeah, thanks, on a song man. you don't remember. Thanks. No problem. All right. Moving on to actual Halo now. Yes, Halo. We played some MCC on Friday as well for the community play date. We did. I got my per- first perfection. You did. Ever. You did. It was Halo 4. Hell yeah, it was. So does it really count? I don't know. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does, Will. It does count. Listeners, it counts. Um, we the metal popped up. It did. We, I felt so bad for those kids. Why? Cause they were horrible. We played social. It wasn't ranked. Yeah, I know. Anything. I know. But man, they, they did. It, they got stomped. It was, I, it, we're also running with a four stack. Yeah. So. A four stack in halo four in social in social. What are you going to do? <laughs> um, and then I also played a little earlier in the week. Before the weekend gaming, I played some Halo 5. You played some Halo 5. What happened when so, you played Halo 5, Will? You know, uh, with the imbalance of players. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I matched up against Nated. You did? Yeah. Former professional Halo player, Brett Nated. I forgot his last name. So did I. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to say, is it like Kavanaugh? No, that's not right. No, uh, that's strong side yep strong side's last name is kavanaugh anyway so there was on our team there was what map and what game type empire oddball right does that make sense or or, i know it's not eden but the one that looks like eden it's empire right with the turbine overshield on turbine um sure yeah let's just go with that okay (laughs) <laughs> to be honest, I'm blanking right now. I'm sorry. You um, matched against I Nated. matched against Nated. So there was... Nated was the champ. There was a champ on our team. A couple plat players and then a gold player for each team. So it was like... So you, you had the gambit. Weird team there. <laughs> yep. So we ended up winning. I don't remember the score off the top of my head, but um, obviously what? two fifty Is it 200 or 250? Is I believe the, it's 250 for oddball. So it was like 250 to, let's say, somewhere in the 60s or 70s. Or, or is it 150 for oddball? 150? 150? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Are we really blanking this hard? I think it's 250. Halo 5 Esports has been gone for so long. Um, I don't remember. Let me... Um, but anyway, so we're... Uh, at first, I didn't know he was in my game when I started. So we were playing, and I was just getting melted out of nowhere. I'm like, what the... F- is happening here sure what's going on I, I i i open the the pause menu and i'm like oh no like i'm up against nated so game started we went down right away it is 150 by the way i thought so. Um, okay. 
we went down like 40 points right away. Couldn't okay. get ball control. And finally we, we broke it. Right. And we started holding the ball. Um, I was very happy with my teammates because they were actually rotating correctly, getting into the right spots you want to hold the ball. Where I'm at in plat play right now for Team Arena, it's not been good, I'll say. I'm, sure. Like, people just hide in the dumbest positions, and we just get naded out, and it sucks. Um, teammates were rotating well. Um, I was getting slays here and there. My favorite <laughs> my favorite point of the game is the, um, the other team had the ball, and I'm battling on, like, blue stairs and I boost, I jump and I boost back to mid and then try to jump where turbine is to get out of the way. Yeah. And I land, I turn and look to, to like towards the middle or towards turbine to try to, cause the guy should be coming from blue stairs around. Yep. Nated is literally standing on over shield with the oddball staring at me, not shooting. I'm like, what the fuck? So I, I turned, I turn away, I turned towards him, and I like knew I, I was one shot. I knew I was beat. I wa- I just like, I crouched, and then he just dropped the ball, shot me, and went on with his, his day. <laughs> I was like, there's nothing I'm gonna do here. Oh man! So I, so like I said, that like moment of like, oh, uh, uh, that's the yep, okay, <laughs> yep. Like so, yeah. I didn't even shoot at him. I sure. probably should have, but it was that moment where I just knew I was caught. And I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> do you remember the headlights moment? Yep. That's awesome. So, he, yeah, it, it was. It felt like it was slow motion to me. Sure. Just watching, like, he was just standing there. He wasn't moving, just holding the ball on over shield, probably waiting for it to pop up. Yep. And it, it was up as soon as, and then he shot me. And, uh, so, anyway. Oh, that's um, funny. We, game keeps going. I end up getting the ball on red, I guess you'd call it red elbow. Sure. And um, I held it there. I, had, I got the magic hands. Um <laughs> like how you just gave like the <laughs> yeah the jazz hands. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I got the magic hands uh, um, medal. I had seventy nine seconds of ball time to win out the game. Um, final score was one fifty to eighty three. Um, I had a four point zero KDA with a fifty four percent accuracy. Um, since I held the ball, I only had twelve hundred damage. But there was a champ player in my game, and it was nated, and I felt good doing that well. Yeah, against against him. I got a couple kills on him as he, he probably got like five or six on me, but I got a couple kills on him. Yeah. Felt good. I was pumped. Got stomped in the next game, but it's okay. <laughs> it is what it is. You're playing a great support player role. So yeah, it's awesome. Um, that's all I played for the week. What about you, Josh? I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I played some MCC in the community play date. It was awesome. I still love Halo four. It was Moving fun. On. I still don't like Halo one. Moving on. Uh, in MCC, in MCC. Sure. Yeah. Sponsor terrible. Um, I played GTA five with you and Dom and Nick. Yeah. We had uh, some fun at the end with like that shootout. It was so fun. We were all trying to shoot each other. It was, anyway. it was fun. Um, and then I played one round of magic, the gathering arena. And why one round? I just had a little bit of time. Sure. I just fired it up. Okay. Played one. I'm waiting for that to come to mobile. I can't wait. I really can't wait for that game to come to mobile. mobile. And then also, um, it's not included here because I didn't play it, but I'm really, like, I have a hankering to play some more Final Fantasy fourteen. So, I'm excited for that. And then, um, the Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Um, it comes out on Whoa. Switch, I think, this week. And so I'll probably play a little bit of that. And then we have shadow keep at the end at uh, the beginning of October. So I'm excited for that too. So I don't know if I bought the annual pass for shadow keep. Yeah. Is that new? Uh Do you have to purchase it new? Yeah. I don't know if I want to dive back into destiny because I've done this so many times, so many times where I buy it, catch back up, put it down. Don't touch it forever. So here's what I'm going to say. I don't want to be an advertisement. For it. Okay. I'm not trying to sound like an advertisement for like Bungie sure. for destiny. Sure. Um, but they've changed how the annual pass works now. So it's piecemeal. So you can buy it all one time if you want to, or you can wait for the piece to come out that you're interested in and just buy that piece. You don't have to buy it all. So if you're interested, you can wait till some, a part of the annual pass comes out and be like, Oh, that does sound cool. Or, Oh no, nah, that sounds stupid. I'm, I'm good. It's up to you. Right. My, my issue is, so destiny for me used to be, you know, grind out all the time, 
until you get the piece of gear you want or yeah. do what you want. Yep. Um, and I just don't, I don't have that need to anymore, I guess you could say. Sure. And these content updates in the past, we've wanted more story from. Yes. We haven't gotten it. It's very, very like minimal. You have to read. Do these. Yeah. You you have to know the lore, right? Yep. It's not in game. You just don't hear it and know it. Um, Bungie is supposed to be changing the way they do it, changing their formula. My, I guess my issue is, is I don't know if I want to spend more money on a game that I play for a few hours and then put down again and don't touch it for months. Sure. That's where I'm at. So, um, so you already know, but for those, the listeners out there, uh, Bungie is now, um, independent, yep. like fully independent. They don't have a publisher anymore. They got away from Activision. Um, from what we heard, it's been amicable between the both of them. And this realistically means that Bungie can do what they want to do. And they don't have to be forced by time constraints or anything like that. Because for those who also don't know, Shadowkeep, this is the first ever Destiny piece of content that's ever been delayed. Ever. And they they came out and they said, hey, we just need a little bit more time on this. We want it to be the best it can be. And you know what? I'm, I'm all for that. If you come out and you say, hey, we need more time, take as much time as you need. I'll be here waiting. It's perfectly fine. If MCC on PC needs more time, by all means, take more time. Make it the best you can. If Infinite needs more time, I'm going to be upset, but I mean, I'll understand. I want it to be the best thing it can be. I want to get it. I want to play it properly. I want it to be fully functional on release day, but I digress. Um, but no, the point I'm getting at here, here is with Bungie being able to do what they want to do now with Destiny, Shadowkeep is their first step towards their full-blown, we're making this into an MMO. And they've come out and said, we're making this into an MMO. This is the first step towards that is they want you to have the gear that you want. They want you to have those things that you constantly go towards right now. This isn't going to be the night and day difference, but it's a step towards that direction. They've clearly said that. Um, do I hope you play it? Yes, because I'd love to play it with you. It's something that we've done. So if you get it cool, if you don't, I understand completely. We'll go from there. Will. Yeah. It's time for the news. First news story of the week. We have Paul Snakebite Dwart announces relationship status. This is by the man Snakebite himself on Twitter, and I quote, I post a lot about how thankful I am for the life I have. This post is no different. Blessed to have found a happiness and motivation that goes beyond just gaming. Very lucky and always thankful. He announced his relationship publicly with Lottie. I totally saw this coming. I, I yeah, um, I had a feeling too. They have been posting together like on Instagram, yeah, and um, Snapchat, whatever it may be. Um, they were always hanging out, gaming together, hanging out after events. I saw, yeah, it's I saw it coming all the way. Yep, I, I kind of had that feeling that something was going on. Now we know. Now we know. Congratulations, you two. That's fantastic. Uh, next up, we have, as of Saturday, September 14th, happy birthday, Halo Reach. This is by Halo on Twitter, and I quote, Nine years ago today, when all hope seemed lost, we joined a team of noble heroes who stood united in defense of all humankind. Happy birthday, Halo Reach. We need to keep playing. We do. I was going to say the same thing. Next news story, Eric Gosayami Hewitt provides context on Halo 5. This is by Eric Hewitt. This is on Twitter, and I quote, It was decided in late 2014 that the team would create remixes using old assets and art from Halo 5 maps to, quote, double the map count, end quote, in a much cheaper way. Hell, we almost didn't have any Covenant maps in Halo 5 because of the concerns around cost. Our souls were almost crushed. Microtransactions equals live service. Live service equals monthly updates. Monthly updates equal monthly deadlines. Monthly deadlines equals we better ship something. We better ship something equals tyrant, overgrowth, regret, etc. Stasis. I can't speak for the differences in art processes and costs from Halo 3 to Halo 5, but maybe Vic can share some more insight if he feels willing enough. He always was championing for players in those meetings. Vic states, oh, I'm too tired to dredge all this up again. I've moved on. I can confirm, however, that everything Eric says is true. Eric states, all good. It takes a toll. Love you, brother. Hope all is well. So that's why we got 
the reskinned maps in Halo 5 yep. to cut costs and actually produce something. Yep. Kind of makes sense. It's unfortunate. It's a very unfortunate. Because a lot of people wanted better maps for Halo 5. Uh, yep. I was very upset when they kept re- re- releasing the remakes and whatnot and just rehashes of this basically the same map. Yep. So hopefully... We learn their lesson from this. Yes. And we get grade A quality, the triple A quality we deserve in Halo Infinite. Couldn't agree more. Will, thank you for stating that. Next news story, the MCC playlist update for September 11th, 2019. This is by Postums over on Halo Waypoint, and I quote, For Halo 4, Infinity Slayer uses the refresh map variants with weapons on map and ordnance for power weapons, loadouts and personal ordnance are enabled. Infinity play, Infinity Slayer is played on Adrift, Abandon, Haven, Solace, Harvest, Landfall, Monolith, Skyline, Pitfall, and Vertigo. Team Slayer, which is a 10% weight, also uses the refresh map variants. Loadouts are enabled, but personal ordnance is disabled. Team Slayer is played on Adrift, Abandon, Haven, and Solace. Legendary Slayer, which is a 33% weight, uses legendary map variants with all weapons on map. Loadouts and ordnance are disabled and players spawn with battle rifles. Legendary Slayer is played on Adrift, Abandoned, Solace, Haven, shout, uh, Shutout, which is Ravine, Ark, which is on Forge Island, Onyx, which is on Forge Island, Landfall, Monolith, Skyline, and Pitfall. Looking ahead, on Wednesday, September 18th, the Halo 2 Anniversary Ranked Hardcore and Halo 2 Anniversary Fast Slayer playlists will rotate out. On this day, all the Forge maps currently in Halo 2 Anniversary uh, Fast Slayer will migrate into Halo 2 Anniversary's 4v4 social categories that same day. Fast Slayer was intended as a limited time throwback to last summer's flights, as, and we look forward to pulling the Forge maps, which debuted in, in it, over to Slayer as well as other game types and social. Halo 2 Anniversary Hardcore is rotating out due to low demand from players. It could return in the future if there is enough demand. We hope you enjoy the Halo 4 focused update, and we'll see you in matchmaking. All I'm waiting for, and I know it's never going to happen, is a Halo 4 ranked playlist. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get it. Man. I will I'm sorry. never get it. It's fine. I, I mean, I'm, I'm over it. It's just, I think it'd be amazing. Um,. Next news story, MCC dev updates. This is by Postums over on Halo Waypoint, and I quote, Fire Flight Bugs Recap. From the first flight, we had over 400 issues get reported by the community. There were many duplicate reports of the same problem users were encountering, so the unique was much smaller in comparison. Below are the top issues that were reported by count. Stability issues on launch, match start, and match end. Settings not working as intended. Audio issues, and intermittent freezes and enemy display issues. All of these issues are being investigated by the test team and have bugs logged against them to have additional information entered to be fixed in the future. Below is a full list of issues reported by the community that have already been fixed. Thank you all for sharing the information. So, exiting out of the settings menu, guns continue to fire. (laughs) That seems bizarre. UI had multiple metal displays. Game incorrectly gives host disconnected message in certain network situations. That would throw people off. Um, picture in picture on weapons like scopes do not match up with view. So, okay. Players could get locked in menus after selecting various sub menus. Death screen camera sensitivity is too slow. You could run faster running diagonally while holding the turret. Misspellings in the change profile description. Using an Xbox controller can cause crashes. Well, it sucks. Whoops. Um, when hovering over the roster, it is in focus, but when moving away from it, it stays highlighted. Fireflight matchmaking menu had placeholder titles. Brutes seem to drop invisible armor lock pickups. Okay. Text sometimes appeared as breadcrumb text breadcrumb. It's <laughs> breadcrumb, not bedcrumb. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, let me state that again. Text sometimes appears as breadcrumb text breadcrumb instead of choose game type. <laughs> Those are completely different things. And during the match, UI offset on ultra wide monitor is present. Again, thank you so much for all the feedback that you have had. We are excited to hear thing about the things you had issues with. So we can put as much polish on the features we have as possible. Xbox PVP flight. Currently the team is still working to identify the best build to branch from right now. There are a handful of key bugs that are waiting to get fixed, as well as pieces of content that may or may not make it into the flighting build. As bugs are fixed and additional work is happening, they may wait a little bit longer to get some key features in, so more systems can be stressed and looked at by the community as they come online. Currently, the team have been having regular Ring Zero playtest, which means internal testing only for feedback and stability checks so far. Only a branch build is identified. We'll... uh, 
Once a branch build is identified, we will be able to move towards flighting and work through any bugs we have backlogged that are blockers. As we moved into the following week, we will have more progress updates to share on the status of flighting as we get ready to push towards the PvP, PvP flighting. Obviously, I can't talk very well in that news story, and I apologize. Next news story, Will, this is a Halo community update, not by, you don't have to use the audio if you don't want to, but it's by Sketch this time, on Halo Waypoint, and I quote, for Halo 5, the upcoming matchmaking updates. This week, Anniversary Throwback is back, replacing Rock and Rail, and Warzone Assault is also back in rotation for the weekend. Here's the latest list of what's on tap for the next few Halo 5 playlist updates. On September 12th, Anniversary Throwback rotates in for Rock and Rail, and Warzone Assault goes live for the weekend. September 19th, ODST Slayer, which is new, rotates in for Action Sack. On September 26th, Halo 3 Classic Throwback rotates in for Anniversary Throwback and Warzone Turbo goes live for the weekend. Note that according to the team, ODST Slayer is still undergoing testing but looks to be on track for release, though things could shift if it's not quite fully baked in time. Stay tuned for that. And the mailbag. Graphics asked, Although I'm not sure it's a ton of time away, what's 343's idea and stance for competitive Halo moving towards... PC. For this one, I turn to Halo Esports lead producer Tashi for the official word. We are super we are super excited about Halo coming to PC and what that can mean for the HCS. First and foremost, we need to ensure that the PC player experience is fit for competitive play, and the MCC team has been working with the community via flighting to make sure that's the case. And this will continue over time. Early reactions seem to be seem to be very positive in terms of overall feeling of gameplay. Next, when Halo does come release on PC, we'll be looking for opportunities to run events for PC to test out the platform. Learn more about what it takes to run Halo Esports on PC and see what the community thinks. All of this and more will inform how we think about the future. Ultimately, we want what's best for the players and fans, so that's what we're going after. We'll be gathering feedback along the way and providing updates as we continue to evaluate for the future. To learn a bit more about the future of Halo Esports, definitely check out the five-year anniversary post dropping on November 5th. So they're going to test things out. There you go. I am still a firm believer that the basis of Halo Esports are remain on console because, Will, we talked about it multiple times in the past, they love their box. They love their boxes. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Gears 5 is doing the same thing. It's going to be played on Xbox, played on console. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's what I expect. Will, you ready for some competitive news? What do you got? First and foremost, Sabinator removed from Infinite after sexual harassment. This is by Infinite. It's a post that I, and I quote. At 8.08 p.m., Infinite ownership were made aware of a tweet made by a member of the Halo community. That tweet contained clear proof of a member of the Infinite Halo team behaving in a manner that can only be described as disgusting. The bottom line is that it was blatant sexual harassment. At 8.10 p.m., that member of the Infinite Halo team was removed and will never again participate in anything under the Infinite banner. The behavior that was demonstrated in the texts and Snapchat conversations that were shared is absolutely is absolutely unacceptable behavior in the eyes of Infinite or any other respectable organization. We want to thank Rachel, at underscore outrageous, for being brave enough to come forward with this. Without that, we would have never been made aware of what was being done behind closed doors, and that person would have continued to wear the Infinite logo. We also want to sincerely apologize to that community member for having to deal with behavior such as this and to have to deal with it from a member of Infinite no less. We hope that they and the rest of the Halo community understand how much respect we have for the members of this community and how much we love this game. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of it and thank you for your continued support. And as always, hashtag and beyond. That comes from Infinite Ownership. I'm going to say this. We will not be including the screenshots of the DMs that were sent from Sab to Rachel. If you want to see them, Google is your friend. This is purely unacceptable. Infinite, I'm going to say congratulations and thank you for doing something so quickly and responding in the way that you did. That's where I'm going to leave that. 
Is there anything you want to say, Will, before moving on? Nope. All right. Next news story. Revamp announces retirement from competing. This is by Revamp on Twitter, and I quote, Bittersweet post. Some new, but this was my last event competing for Halo. I know I've said this before, but I truly mean it this time. I look forward to coaching a high-level team or hopefully getting a chance to do something I've wanted to do for years. Commentate. Love you all. Um, Revamp, good luck to you in the future with anything that you choose to do. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see what you do in the future. Next up, Saiyan announces next steps. This is by Saiyan over on Twitter, and I quote, With how much I still enjoyed competing again this weekend, it definitely reconfirmed some thoughts I've had about my future. So until around this time next year, I'm going to compete in other games. The primary focus being Apex until Infinite is making its way into the discussion. I really, I've really appreciated making content and streaming as much as I have, but I think this is still what is best for me. Content will still be made, but the qua- uh, quantity will be dialed back. I just want to say thank you to all that have supported me, and I hope to, uh, and I hope to continue supporting me. Halo still will be my main priority, and I hope to take it to the next level once Infinite is coming through. Thank you all so much. Good luck to you, Saiyan. Um, we wish you the best, and we can't wait to see you again when Infinite releases. Next up, Splinter announces throwback tournament. This is by Splinter GG on Twitter, and I quote, We are pleased to announce our first online tournament back. Halo Reach 4v4 on Xbox One. Saturday, the 14th of September at 6 p.m. BST, EMEA region. The admin is MK Viable Manatee. And if you paid attention to the date that I just said, that's right. The results are going to be discussed later on in the show. These already took place. Next up, Lynx Legends announces Halo 5 competitions. This is by Lynx Legend over on lynxlegend.com. Want to win a trip to PAX Australia? What about a trip to PAX East in $2,000? Become the Lynx Legend. How it works. There are online qualifiers. Earn points toward the leaderboard across the season, and points are awarded based on where you place in each cup. The point system. First takes home 100 points, second with 70, third with 45, fourth with 35, fifth through eighth with 10, 9th through 16th with 5, and 17th through 32nd, 2 points. Season 3, Halo 5 will be September 14th and 15th, and then the 21st and the 22nd. But for Gears 5, they will be taking place on September 14th and the 21st. For Season 4, Halo 5, September 28th and the 29th, and then October 5th and the 6th. And then Gears 5 will be September 28th and October 5th. Um, Live finals at PAX Australia. So if you... If you win, there's more information on the website. We included the link in the Google Doc of the show notes of the show. Check it out. But if you are the winner and you become the Lynx legend, you get basically an all expenses paid trip out. Um, if you were a, if you are the winner of the season, I believe you like get flown out and you have the chance to compete in the finals. So awesome to see. That's fantastic. And the last piece of news, Will, we have the Pro-Am Halo Series announced their very first tournament. This is by the Pro-Am Halo Series on Twitter, and I quote, Now that UGC is off everyone's mind, who's ready for our $400 tourney? It's going to be lit. Make sure you join our Discord and fill out the form to compete. We want as many teams competing as possible, and anyone is welcome to play. So check out their Twitter. There's a Discord link in there as well. Join it. If you're interested in competing, sign up. And Will, that does it for the news. Will? Yeah. What do we got for the upcoming tournaments of the week? All right. We have on Saturday, September 21st, it's the SWAT Nation Femme Fatale Redo 2v2. On Sunday, September 22nd, SWAT Nation Swatterino Cappuccino FFA. I love these names. On Tuesday, September 24th, we have Bland Gaming Halo Series Preliminary Number 4. Very nice, Will. Thank you for reading through those. And what do we got for the tournament and league recaps for the week? All right. First one, the Splinter Halo Reach Throwback Tournament results. And third and fourth, we had Mad Ting, Sad Ting. This included Slumpy, Lumzer, Kai's, and Haulers. And Demonica looking for eyes emoji. Wait. Is there actually supposed to be an eye emoji or? No, their, their name is Demonica looking eyes emoji. Okay. This included Viable Manatee, Alexer, Savior, and El Nico. 
Second was Reach is Mine. It's included Mista, Phasical, Phasical, um, Defect, and Sinpola. Snipola. Snipe. Snipola. Yeah, first, you got it. First place was the Goobers. This is Porky J, Wanward, Rain, and Icy Venom. Bracket will be included within the Google Doc in the show notes. Next up, we have the Blam Gaming Halo series preliminary number three results. In fifth through eighth, we had Simply Fear Me and Coast to Clan. So press and tapping buttons. Halo Gen and Tyrant. Bacon Blade and L Halo Elite. Fourth place went to Barbie Boy and the Gold Star BR. Third was Nikolai and B- Benz. Second was Stress and Gunplection. First went to Scariotic and Vemzy. Next up, Envor's $340 Halo 5 BTB tourney results. Fourth was Titty Twisters. <laughs> when uh, I read that, I'm like, wait a second. I did a double take. I'm like, oh, oh they're, they're legitimately called on, Titty guys. Twisters. Third place went to Martial Punishment. Second went to Bellicuz. And first went to Vegetable Eaters. I wonder if they eat vegetables. They must. Next up, Halo Plus Wars. Liars. Europa Halo Wars 2 World Series qualifier number two. Seventh through eighth, we had Keith Schwept. Hero and, and and Hero Absolution. Fifth through six, Cars and Cameras and Stormy Style. Fourth was Nintendo Hippie. Third, EOD Spartan Seb. And second and first. The tournament is still going it's on still right now. still going on, yep. But those placings are confirmed. In the grand final, we have right now Almirante 99, who came from winners. Okay, so currently the winner's bracket champion, going up against Diverse V1, coming from loser's Ooh. bracket. Um, it looks like the first set in the grand final is still going on, in which case it may go to a second set, or this could be it if Almirante wins out. If the tournament finishes while we're still recording the show, we'll come back to this and we'll give you the final results. Um, due to past records, I got my money on Almirante 99. I do too. I do too. But hey, that's nothing against diverse. And you know what? For the record, if I'm, let me just look at this and see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so winners bracket round three. Okay, mm-hmm. Almirante ninety nine went up against Diverse. When is winners bracket round three? Okay, there was one more winners bracket round after that, and then the winners bracket final. So Diverse has been in the losers bracket for a little while now, and has had to fight their way back to where they are. So they could be a little bit more warmed up, in which case this grand final could be a little bit different. But I still think Almirante can can pull it out here. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. If the tournament finishes by the time we're still recording, we'll hit back on this and we'll give you the full results. All right. That's, that's all we have for tournaments, man. Then it's time for some shout outs. Will. First and foremost, happy belated birthday to Mick Win. Shout out to everyone who joined the community play date. This included high tech redneck, Maddie rums and goalie sniper, AKA Justin LaFleche. And finally, shout out to everyone who has already contributed to the topic discussion. Again, we're going to be talking about it next week. So you have an extra week to put your to put your discussions in. I'm going to compile them all together, make it clear and concise. We'll talk about it next week. There's a ton of information out there on franchising. And there's a lot of people who are commenting, a lot of information to sift through. Yes. That's why we did hold off this week. Yep. Um, just we wanted to make sure we could... Um, devote enough time to this. Yes. And I also wanted to flow consistently throughout the episode. Yeah. Not a lot of jumping between conversations, you know, that's why like I'm going to ask this in discord, but if you do leave an opinion on it, I ask that over this week, you put, you combine all your thoughts together, have one clear, concise post, and then I can go through that. And I'll, I'll ask that on discord as well. So fair enough. Awesome. It's time for some community creations. Ah, First and foremost, me Monday, Will. There's memes on Monday on Reddit. They're Halo related. Reddit.com forward slash R forward slash Halo. Check it out. Be there or be square, Will. Don't be a square. Clips of the week number 18 by High Tech Redneck over on YouTube. And guess what, Will? If Clips of the week number 19 releases on Monday, it will also be included within this episode's show notes. Ooh. You could get double the clips of the week by high tech. Check them out. The UGC Halo Classic Atlantic City highlights. 
This is by Paradise Halo. These are Halo 3 highlights. Check out that YouTube video. Then we have Joey Trippy Taylor Halo 3 Minitage on YouTube. Check that out. Then we have Shiesty's Halo 5 montage. Check that out. These are all on YouTube. You already know. Next up, we have the Atlantic City Vlog. This is by Boo Boo Doo Boo. Check that out on YouTube. It's 20 minutes long. It's full of the good good. Then we have photo albums from UGC Atlantic City by David Doran and Keith Brake. Check those both out. Both phenomenal photo albums of the event. What? You always include this last piece of community creation. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yes, I do. Hey, I didn't include the time lapse, okay? But I did include Scud Puddle writes a song. This is my Scud Puddle. He put it on Twitter. Check it out. It's good. Love you, Scud. Didn't think I'd include this one, did ya? But I did. Will. Yeah. That's it. For the community creations. <laughs> just looking at me like, can we hurry this up, please? I'm just giving you the voices, Will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Will. Yeah. So, uh. You played rock band. I did. You did. What What is your favorite song in the game? Oh, I've asked you this before. I don't think you gave me a straight answer. Okay, so <clears throat> what is your what's your, like your go to? What is your go to song? You play it every time you boot up the game. There has to be one. Um, there's a couple that I play every time. What What are they? Fat Bottom Girls by Queen. It's a great song. Uh, ah! You're going to take me home tonight. And then there's also Valerie by the Zuttons. Glee did a great version of that yep. song too. It was, it was, it's, it's just fun to sing for me. Um, gosh, what other ones do I always boot up? Um, those are like the two main ones. It's weird, like, trying to think about all... Because I downloaded a fair amount of songs. Sure. It's hard to think through the whole list. Because usually... So what I do is I boot up the game and I make a playlist. Usually about six to seven songs. Okay. I just play through them. Like, they're back to back to back to sure. back right after each other. And, like, I kind of pick and choose sometimes. Sometimes I'm feeling that 80s vibe, and I'll choose a bunch of Queen songs. Or sometimes, like, I'd go with Weezer and Foo Fighters and that kind of genre. Sure. Um, sometimes I'm all over the board. Like, this time I did I did a little bit of everything. I start off with some country. Um, my one of my one Another fun song that I've always loved to, to sing because I just like the song is I Love This Bar by Toby Keith. I have that one on there. Um, the low notes are tough, though. It goes way down there. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's hard to know, like, remember all the songs I have. Um, and they're, they're all over the board. Like, I got some Ed Sheeran that I sing on there. Like I said, I have Queen. I have, I'm on my way! Uh, which one do they have? It's um, it's probably not that song. It's the one, um, oh, God damn it. I'm singing it in my head right now to try to get to the chorus. Why don't you sing it for us right now? No. Though? <laughs> it's the um it's doo, 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 doo. <laughs> It's not gonna come to me until I don't the know. end of the show. I don't know many Ed Sheeran songs. It's okay if you can't remember it. It's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Maybe next week. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we'll hit back on it. Anything else you want to know about rock band? What why are you asking me about rock band now? You know what's funny? Well, what? Did you realize where we were at in the show? Yeah. Okay. You realized that you just stalled for me, right? I know. Okay. That was what I was getting at. That was what I thought was hilarious the whole time. I'm surprised you ran with it. I had no idea you were going to run with it, but you did. Hey, I you did what I do every single week. <laughs> now it's on you. Hey, I enjoy myself some rock band. Hey, I, I have all the segment. rock band games. Lego Rock Band, Beatles Rock Band, all of them. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Will, <laughs> Will, plug the show. Please. You can find us on your favorite podcast services. Just search for HCS Pro Talk. We are on 
Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, and others as well. Leave us a review and let others know about the show. You can join the community discussion over on Discord. Link will be provided in the Google Doc of the show notes. Find us on Xbox. We have an Xbox Club and Spartan Company. Search for HDS Pro Talk there. We are on social media. We're over at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Mixer, Twitch, and Esportspedia. Search for HDS Pro Talk on your platforms. Come find us. I'll put it in Google. Things will pop up. Things do pop up. Yep. You know what else is great? What? So you know how you said the Discord links in the Google Doc of the show notes? Yeah. Yeah. It's on Twitter as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I shouted that out last week. I know you did. I'm just including it as well in case people don't look at the show notes. And if you don't look at the show notes, <sighs> I'm of, disappointed in you. Of, <laughs> there's a lot of good information there. There is. All the news stories are there. I'll have to say, like, sometimes if you're on mobile or some sites don't actually include the show notes properly. Oh, okay. I understand. So, it is what it is. It is what it is. But like you said, you made the Discord easily accessible on Google. Or not Google, Twitter. Thanks for thanks to one of the community members who asked for it. Yes. See, ask and you shall receive. We like to accommodate here at HGS Pro Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know where I'm going with that. What do we have on the next episode, Josh? Well, great segue. <laughs> there was no segue. You know what? It's fine. Don't I worry about it. it out. <laughs> Well, it's time for some shout outs. Um, our actual topic discussion of esports franchising is next week. So we, we talked about like two or three times in this episode so far. We're giving everybody an extra week to put their discussion in for the topic uh, because I want to make sure I go through everything that everybody has had to say. I want things to be clear and concise. We can um, run through it all on the show in a nice, easy to digest fashion. So that's what's going to be on next week's episode, Will. And I'm super excited. Especially, I'm actually more glad that we're waiting another week because every time, like every day that passes more and more information comes out about this COD franchising franchising. And so I think that given another week, I think we'll have even more. So I'm excited and modern warfare comes out really soon. So yeah, I'm excited. Are you going to download the beta? I don't know. Okay. Let me know if you do. Preferably if you got, if like, if you waited till it's open on PC, that'd be awesome because I would want, I don't like the, you know, I don't like the PlayStation controller, Yeah. but if you decide to download it and play it on any platform, let me know. Okay, cool. We'll do. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for episode 92 of HCS Pro Talk. I want to thank you very much for listening as you always do. Yeah. <laughs> Will just gave me a smile like, what the F was that? Um, Yeah, we'll be back next week. I imagine there's going to be a lot of news to talk about. There was a lot more news this week than last. Felt good. Um, A lot of big announcements that were taking place, and I'm really looking forward to that November 5th. That's the date. We should put that on our calendar, the November 5th uh, HCS update that's going to be taking place. That was hinted at in the in, previously in the news of this show. Um. Yeah, really looking forward to what they have for the HCS 2019-2020 season. And yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us. We'll catch you next week. We're going to talk about esports franchising, whether or not you like it, you don't like it, whether or not it belongs in Halo. We'll talk about everything you have to say. But until next week, bye-bye!